Hi, my name is Esther and I'm from the University of Warwick UK student recruitment team. And in this short 10 minute video, we are going to be covering the ins and outs of applying to UK universities through UCAS. So how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, we're going to look at the question, what is UCAS? We're then going to go on an overview of the UCAS process, so what you can expect as a student applying to university. And finally, we are going to cover some interesting questions on entry requirements. So let's get started then. What is UCAS? Well, UCAS stands for the University and Colleges Admissions Service. It is essentially, in a very short sentence, the service that you use to apply to UK universities. So you might be thinking that's all well and good, but how do I actually go about applying? Now, I could give you a step-by-step -step guide to that right now, but I don't think we have enough time. So I'd recommend if you're currently sat here thinking, I don't even know where to begin, I want a step-by-step -step instruction, please do check the UCAS website. It is a brilliant place to find out the in particulars and the specifics of the whole process. But what we're going to focus on now is really the key components to a UCAS application and to a competitive application. And so to start off with them, one very, very key and important part of applying for UCAS is applying on time, and that is knowing your deadlines. In general, most courses that you apply to through UCAS have a deadline of the 15th of January each year. So that's when you need to get your application sent in. That's what we have at Warwick. Um, for some courses, for example, if you're applying to Oxford or Cambridge, you're interested in things like veterinary or medicine and those kind of sciences, the application deadline can be earlier. So it can be the 15th of October. And it's worth looking again on the UCAS website to see what you fall under. But what actually do you need to include in a UCAS application? So if I was going to summarise what you include in your application and the UCAS process in about 20 seconds, I would say this. So essentially you apply through UCAS, you submit one application and this one application is sent off to five different university options. And when this application is received by the university you're applying to, quite commonly at Warwick, it is read and assessed by a course selector. So that's someone based in the department that you'll be applying to. And also by central admissions tutors. And these are basically professionals in admissions. So your application is being read and considered by people who really know their stuff, either about your course or about applying and admitting students to university. So another question you might have is, well, what is it admissions tutors are looking for? And I'd say that can be summarised by three key components of your UCAS application. The first of these being your academic qualifications. So that's both your predicted grades. So if you're in year 12 studying A-levels now, those would be your predicted grades. And then also your achieved qualifications. So exams or things that you've already studied. So things like your GCSEs, looking at your grades in that. Um, and then we also look at your personal statement. And this is by far one of the things I get asked the most about. And I understand why it can be quite daunting when it comes to writing it. But to put you at ease, your personal statement is unique to you. And it's ultimately a statement which expresses your desire to study a particular course at university. And at Warwick, we really like it if it hones in on that academic interest. We want to know what motivates you and how you can show us that. And then we also have your teacher's reference. And this is ultimately a reference which unpacks and tells us a little bit more about you and about your suitability to academic study. And if you are currently watching this in year 12, you do not need to worry about that. That is something that your teachers or your referee will focus on. So now we're going to kind of backtrack and focus a bit on entry requirements. And the reason why I'm doing that is because entry requirements is certainly a topic that we get a lot of questions about and causes a fair bit of concern and worry. And a question I'd like to address right now is, well, should you be worried about entry requirements? And, you know, I think one of the answers to that is understanding why they're there and why we ask for particular grades. So in general, entry requirements are really there to ensure that when you come to study a course at university, you are as prepared as you can be, as equipped as you can be, to really thrive and succeed on that course. 
I think it's really worth having that in mind when you're looking at university course entry requirements. They're there to ensure that you are as prepared as you can be when you go to university. And it's also worth noting on this that we look at the whole context of your application when you apply to Warwick. So it's not just, you know, the only thing we look at is not just your personal statement, not just the teacher's reference. We look at the whole full picture. And we understand that different students are applying from completely different contexts. So we will consider that when we are assessing and reviewing your application. So essentially all of this is saying there is no one size fits all approach to writing a UCAS application. Um, there's no magic formula in on it. I'm sorry if I had it, I'd want to give it to you, but I can't. But ultimately, there are only a few top tips that I can give you now that will hopefully help you in the preparation process. So with that in mind, something you might be asking is, well, what are the typical entry requirements for the University of Warwick? And while they do vary from course to course, um, they typically range from A star, A star, A to A, B, B. And that's sort of our A level offer. So a question you might have then, uh, well, how important are my GCSEs? And we do consider GCSEs as part of your application at Warwick. And it's worth mentioning that specific courses might ask for particular grades in GCSEs. For example, our management course at Warwick looks for a GCSE grade in maths and also in a humanities or social sciences subject. So it's really worth doing that investigating. And one of the best ways you can do that is through visiting the university course pages. So we have a course search tool at the University of Warwick and it's worth looking on there if you want to really focus on the particulars of a course's entry requirements. And that also includes finding out things about the A-levels. So some courses ask for specific A-levels for entry onto the course. For example, engineering at Warwick asks for maths and physics currently. Our law programme doesn't currently ask for any specific A-level, so it does vary from course to course. So it's ultimately worth spending that time now to do that research. So it's worth considering that there might be other parts of the application as well that are mentioned on the course pages. For example, does the subject ask for you to complete any written work? Is there an interview involved in it? Maybe they ask for a creative portfolio for a creative course. One area as well that we do ask um, for one of our subjects is an entrance exam. And we currently ask students who are applying to maths to complete the step paper. We don't ask for any other entrance exams at Warwick, but other universities might. So it is worth checking on their pages. And now a question you might have equally, if you're sat here as a BTEC student is, well, do Warwick accept BTECs? And we do take them into consideration for certain courses. I couldn't summarise all of the courses for you right now. So that's why it's important to do that research in your spare time. But it is considered for a number of our courses. As you can see, for example, on this page that I've got from our theatre studies programme. We might just consider a BTEC on its own or it might be with a combination of A-levels as well. So the best thing you can do is to research the course first then get in touch with us if you have any questions. So what happens once your application is reviewed? And so ultimately the university then make a decision and it can be one of these. So first of all, it might be unsuccessful, which means unfortunately we are unable to provide you with a place on the course at this time. You might be made what we call a change of course offer, which isn't all that common, but it's ultimately say you'd applied for management and the assessors thought, we can't offer you a place on management, but we think you'd be really well suited to accounting and finance. And then one of the more common ones, um, you might be given a conditional offer. And that means brilliant, we would love for you to come and study at our university regarding you meet these particular conditions. And these are made clear to you when you are given that offer. But just to expand on that, that means ultimately, you know, if you're studying in year 12, we might give you a conditional offer and ask for you to um, attain certain A-level grades. So that's great. Come and study with us as long as you attain these grades in your A-levels. It might be even subject specific. For example, currently for economics at Warwick, you might be made an offer saying, yes, come and study with us regarding you get A star AA, including an A in maths. 
If you are an overseas student and English is not your first language, it might also then include English language requirements as part of that condition. So all of these things kind of factor in together to make that conditional offer, which again is made clear to you when you receive it. Then you have the unconditional offer. That's not very common at Warwick. Um, that's mainly because we only really make them if you have already achieved your academic qualifications and you have met all the conditions of the offer that we have made to you. If you're unsure about unconditional offers, we go into this a little bit more in our admission statement. So I really recommend looking through that if it's something that you're you know, concerned about or you have questions about. We go in and pack it a little bit more there. So what happens once you've been made your offers? So in an ideal world, if you receive, say, four conditional offers from your five university choices, the decision making power is in your hand. So you have to narrow down your options to two choices. And the first one being your firm choice university. So this is ultimately the university you really want to apply to, you really want to study at and the university that if you get your grades on A-level, IB results day, um, whatever results day you have, this is the university you want to be going to. And then you have an insurance choice university. And this should also be a university you would like to go to. Um, the reason I say that is because it's kind of your backup option. So if you miss the grades for your firm choice, your insurance choice university is there to support you. You can then hopefully, if you've just missed those grades, you will hopefully have the grades to get into your insurance choice, which is why we recommend that you have lower entry requirements for insurance choice than your firm choice university. And I'd like to end this with one final piece of advice on applying to university, which I would love to have said to my year 12 self as I was worried about all the different choices available and if I'd get in. And that is, it's okay in this process where you're doing loads of research and it's really intensive as well to take some time. Um, if you're watching this already, you're already doing the things you need to be doing to help inform you when you're making these decisions about your future. That's it in a nutshell. There is a whole other section that could follow this on clearing and adjustment and what you do if you've missed your offer or you exceed your offer, but that's probably for another time. But if you do have questions on these things, definitely go and check out the university admissions pages. They have a lot of frequently asked questions and answers that you can look at and all the best with your applications, wherever you're watching this from across the UK and the world.